In February and March, I went through my collection, picked out a bunch of brand new makeup that I have never tried up to that point, and I spent two months getting to know those products. If you want to hear my thoughts on my February and March Shop My Stash, then please keep on watching. Hi guys, how are you doing? How How is everyone doing? Today, we're gonna go back in time to February and March. It is currently April 14th, so I'm sorry I'm quite late on this, but I wanted to just go back and run down through the products that I used in those two months and give you my thoughts. Also, my eyeshadow brand for my February and March shop my stash was Juvia's Place. I played with seven different eyeshadows and today I'm gonna rank those for you guys. And lastly, there were a few products that didn't quite work out, so today we are are going to be running through a lot of different things so before we jump in i just wanted to welcome anybody that is new here thank you so much for stopping by if you haven't already please consider subscribing and liking this video and let's get into some of the things that i want to run through today so we're going to go over all of my shop my stash products for february and march if you watch that video you know it's a lot i picked out a bunch of brand new products that i had yet to try and i still have a lot more in fact i did an entire video of all of my brand new eyeshadows that I have never tried up to now basically and I will go ahead and link that video in the cards for you guys in case you're curious but let's go through all of my complexion products then we're gonna rank all of my Juvia's Place eyeshadow palettes and then at the end after I go through everything I'll also let you know what I'm going to be decluttering because there were a few products that I don't think I need to hold on to for primer I selected the touch and soul no problem I used this a few times I've been really enjoying it thus far. I did a get ready with me that you guys can watch and I use that on there And I even mentioned that what I liked about it is it doesn't pell even though that day I had a moisturizer that was also kind of a bit pore filling uh, It's definitely a smoothing pore filling primer, but it's not it's not so silicone-y that everything just slips and slides all over the place It's a little silicone-y, but it's like the perfect amount of silicone for me because I don't like it when my face is so smooth I start feeling like I can ice skate on it and then I tried tried the Forsali liquid glass. I'm really enjoying this. I really am. This serum is so nice. It just gives like a little bit of glow or something to your skin. I've used both of these in some of my more recent videos. The Forsali, I think it's my Ulta 21 Days of Beauty video that I did where I talked about why I'm not buying anything from the sale. I can link that video even though the sale is over so I don't know if you'd be curious to hear my thoughts but um, in any case I used this in that video so if you want to see how my skin looks in that you can go check it out. Today I already have a lot of my April Shop My Stash products on my face and I also filmed a video where like I used all of my most bougie makeup so if any of those videos are up I can go ahead and link them otherwise maybe I will leave them down in the description box as I upload them. Okay so for, for primer the only other primer I use and you guys won't be able to see it but I tried the Undercover Perfecting Coconut Face Primer from Marc Jacobs and I really enjoyed this primer as well very moisturizing very very light scent i love the texture it reminded me a little bit of the smashbox primerizer which is actually what i have on today but a different scent of course slightly different texture i would say the primerizer is even more liquidy this is like a little more creamy but i really enjoyed that for concealer i tried out the pretty vulgar uh, undercover in little white lies i didn't think this was an amazing concealer but this is a decent concealer it's let's say it's light to medium coverage it's quite serumy it's not heavy so that part i really did like it's quite liquidy unlike let's say the tart shape tape i enjoyed this the shade is like my skin color right now maybe even touch too dark for me but i hopefully will get a lot of use out of this in the upcoming few months as i get maybe at least a little sun but who knows nowadays right for powder one of the powders i selected was this laura geller filter fix in uh this is the filter fix big correcting setting powder in universal apricot i have mixed feelings about this i have a feeling that as long as i keep using it and figure out the best way to use it i will really like this like if i am using it very lightly under the eyes or all over but like really really lightly i love the effect that it gives the problem is the color if i use too much will actually show up on my face like it'll actually seep into some of my fine lines or especially my bigger creases so i've got to really figure out a better way of using it i'm gonna keep this and i'm gonna keep trying to use this but it's not my favorite because it's gonna be like a high maintenance product for me 
Then another powder I selected but I didn't get a chance to use was this Sephora. Uh, this is more of like a powder foundation and matte one at that. And we were still kind of in colder, wintry weather, obviously in February and March. So I didn't end up using this yet. So I'll have to pull this back into my shot, my stash at another point. For foundation, this Mali Flawless Finish Transforming Effect Foundation in Fair is what I used a few times. Uh, you will see this in the Get Ready With Me. If you want to hear more thoughts on my first impression, it wasn't a glowing first impression to be honest so I don't know how I feel about this I mean at the end of the video today I'm gonna make a final decision on what I am and am not decluttering I don't know yet I don't know yet stay to the end and we can we can see what I decide at that point there was a bunch of little samples that I pulled out in foundations I'll be honest guys I haven't really used any of them some of these I will have to pull back in the only sample I did use was I tried the by beauty agave lip mask a few times and i liked it so i know it's for later down the road with the lip products but i figured i'd just get these little baby things out of the way right now and then the other thing i tried was the eden primer potion i really like this i still have product in here so i need to continue using it before it gets dried up for other complexion products i didn't have a bronzer pulled in because i didn't have a brand new one i had a ton of new blush and i did actually use quite a lot of it i tried this jouet uh, blush duo in rose gold this is a baby size and this is what i am wearing in my i believe stop panic shopping video i have a whole video on how a current global crisis has been affecting me and just how we can all try to not panic shop and do some other things instead so i'm wearing this blush in that video and then this is the wander blush and bronzer duo i only ended up trying the blush from this duo and i tried it in my get ready with me and then one or two other times just on my own i'll be honest guys i love the color of this blush but the wear time on it is not fantastic on my skin however blush that i really loved using was this laura geller baked blush and brighten in sunlit rose i really 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 enjoyed this blush. I think this may be the favorite from this month, followed by the Jouer. Those blushes I really, really did enjoy. For highlighter, I enjoyed both. I liked the ColourPop Flexitarian. You're going to see that in several of my videos. Definitely the um, Get Ready With Me. And then one of my standout favorites and a total surprise were these Reveal Luminizing Drops from Algenist in Rosé. I'll link down in the description box what products I had on in which videos, because right now, I'm just afraid with so many different products and using them in different videos I'm gonna get myself all mixed up and unfortunately I didn't prep in advance and write it out that was silly of me and something to learn for the next time shall we do lip products and save the Juvia's Place ranking for the end I think so and the decluttering oh no wait hold on brows it cosmetics brows I did use this a few times I am so proud of myself I actually started doing my brows a little bit I have a different brow product in my brows today but this one is in all of my past three videos this is what I have on together with my benefit gimme brow and I'm liking it I'm even liking this universal taupe color I have no idea why it's universal but apparently and then this is the Hikari black liner in Raven and um, I think I only tried this two or three times. It was a nice black liner. Nothing to write home about. I liked it. I'm gonna keep using it. For mascara, I tried out the Hourglass Caution Mascara. I'll be honest, I kept wanting to reach for my Ilia mascara, even though this was in my shop, my stash. I used it, but only a few times. I still like the Ilia better, although I, you know, I can still keep using it until I can't anymore because it's too old or it runs out or something. Okay, lips. There's a couple of products I didn't get a chance to use, so let me go through those. I did not get a chance to use this. I deserve the best from Real Her. I'll give it a shot another time. I didn't really get a chance to use this Bare Minerals lipstick in uh, Seriously Red. However, I'm wearing the Ciate Liquid Velvet in Diva on my lips right now, and I really, really love the color. It is feathering a little bit, but I think it is my lip liner. I have a lip liner that's on its last legs. It's like a stubby, and I'm trying to use it up, and it's been uh, feathering on me recently. It wasn't when I first got it, so I guess it just is going bad, but I'm liking that Ciate lipstick so far. Let's see. 
It does transfer a bit. I put this on maybe about 20 minutes ago, 30 minutes ago, but it's not bad. It's definitely a nice color. Um, some standouts. I really, really loved the Bite Beauty gloss in Opal. I have this on in quite a few different videos. I have this on in my actual February, March shop, my stash. Also, I feel like have it on either in my Stop Panic shopping video. No, my Ulta 21 Days Beauty. In fact, I wore this lipstick, this Fenty Matte Moselle lipstick in Flamingo. No, Flamingo Acid. And then I topped it with this. I really like this combination. I like this with just a lip liner. I really like this gloss. And then finally, the Artemis Beauty lipstick. I enjoyed. It's nothing out of this world, but it's very nice. And again, I'll link down the video is where I wore all of these products. Okay, let's get into what I like to call the star of the show, which is the eyeshadows, because let's face it, I love my eyeshadows. We're gonna rank these, and I'll be honest, I love all these palettes. This is just a preference of color story, comfort zone of, you know, which colors I like and which colors I prefer, and just current excitement level for an eyeshadow palette based on how long I've had it, how many times recently I've used it. This is not uh, anything to do with quality. I would say Juvia's Place quality is very, very consistent. I love all of these shadows, but let's go through and let me tell you why. As of today, this is going to be the order. Warrior 3 is number seven. It's my newest one. Well, I have three newest ones. I did give this some love. I have this on in my brand new palettes in my collection, and I like the look that I came up with. And in fact, I like a few looks that I did with this, but this is just so bright. This is not going to be an everyday palette for me. This is one of those every once in a while palettes or let's go in here for a specific shade. So that is the only reason this is number seven. Number six is going to be my masquerade. And honestly, it's only because I didn't really get a chance to play with this much because I was focused on my newer Juvia's Place palette since this was my two months of everything new. However, looking at this now, what I think I would love to do is I would love to go back and play with my Natasha Denona Sunset palette, which I have on my eyes today and these two rows because I think there's a few colors in here that might create similar looks. So I still need to give Masquerade some love. I used to use this a little bit years ago when I first got it, but I didn't really get a chance to play with it much these past couple of months. Next in line is my Warrior palette. I love the color story of this. And again, it's just a matter of the fact that I already knew I like this palette. It's not the one I really dug into the most, the past two months. So I foresee this a one day, maybe overtaking the next top four palettes, but that day is just not right now. So I love this palette, but as of today, it's the fifth in place as far as just how often I wanna reach for it. In the fourth place is my Deuce palette. Oh, I keep forgetting to show you guys, although I think you know what they look like. So my Deuce palette uh, got a lot of love in February. I even created a Valentine's Day look with it, and I can definitely throw that up in the cards in case you guys are looking for some pink and red inspired looks. I love this palette. It is so interesting. It is so unique. And actually, this is one of the palettes I selected for my top spring palette. So I hope to actually get some more use out of this palette in the upcoming couple months. Then we have the Nubian 2. And to be honest, I didn't really get to use this much, but I just still know that this was my number one palette going into this, but I hadn't tried three of the current palettes. And it's now dropped down to number three, but again, only because I haven't used it, I think. I do still love, love, love the color story of this palette, and I can't wait to break this out, especially in the fall. I think in the fall, this will be my number one. One. And then we've got the top two. Both are new to my collection and I'll be honest, this was really hard. I think they were pretty much tied because I love them for different reasons. The Saharan 2 is taking the second place. 
I absolutely love the few unique shades here. Overall, this color scheme is a bit dark for me as far as transition colors, and that's why I think it's a number two spot. Because for transition colors, even though Juvia's Place palettes do go on a little bit lighter, I still have to be so light-handed with these to be able to go in and create a look just from this palette. But I absolutely love the shimmers. I want to say more than my number one palette. I adore this shade in Marrakesh. I love this Aziza shade. I love this, I have no idea how to pronounce that, Chef Shawen. Chef Shawen. This beautiful, like light, tealy, blue, gold. I don't even, I mean, there are so many amazing colors within that shade. I can't even describe it. So I do, I think the only color I didn't use was this bright blue. Everything else I have tried the past two months and I love this palette. And then my number one is gonna go to the Tribe for right now. This definitely is a great spring palette because of these three mattes. I feel like I can use this as a transition. I can use this as a transition. So definitely the transition shades work better for me here than they do in the Saharan too. And I love these shimmers here and those greens are beautiful. I love green. This is just an overall such a cool, cool palette. So right now this has beat out all the other ones. But as I said, you know, ask me in a month or two or six months in the fall and this might be a totally different story. I think I went through pretty much everything. If I've missed a couple of products, guys, I'm sorry. Let's talk about things that I think I'm going to be parting with. And I've been thinking about it as I've been talking to you guys about the eyeshadows and just considering how much makeup I have, I definitely am going to declutter the Mali foundation. I just don't see myself reaching for it. And then I think what I'm going to do, there's a couple of other products I'm just not sure about. The concealer I'm going to keep using for a while. And then if I see that I'm not reaching for it or not loving it in the next couple of months, I might let go of that. And I'm going to do the same for this Wonder Beauty Duo. I liked the blush, but I'm not sure I'm going to keep this just for the blush. So I need to play with this palette more, see if I can use that other shade in any other way, and then decide. And then some of these samples I might eventually let go of. Those are all my thoughts on the February and March products. These were all brand new when I started. I am so thrilled that I got a chance to try these products. I mean, I have to Definitely some new favorites. I loved the primers, this blush, some great lip products. I am so, so happy that I did this and that I got a chance to play with some of this brand new makeup. Thank you so much for stopping by and watching this video. Please consider subscribing. Please like this video if there was something that you feel like you got out of it. Give me your thoughts on any of these products if you've tried them. Please let me know what products you've been enjoying and if you are doing a Shop My Stash, please let me know. I would love to go watch it. I guess until next time, guys, thanks again for everything. Please stay safe. Please stay healthy. Please take care of yourself. And I will see you very soon. Bye. So those are my thoughts on everything I used in the March of February. In the March of? In the March of February and month. Great. Great, Natalia. Oh boy. We've gotten to that point. We've gotten to that point of the day and of that point of filming. Okay.